Hi, my name is Mary Vukusevich and this presentation is about investigations used to, to detect and monitor glaucoma. And it's just a review of these investigations and an introduction to the techniques. Before learning about glaucoma and the different types of glaucoma, it's actually really useful to know something about the ocular investigations which are required to diagnose and monitor this very complex disease. So the investigations that I'll be covering as part of this presentation include tonometry, investigation of the angle, pachymetry, optical coherence tomography, perimetry, and finally optic nerve head evaluation. As I mentioned, it's just a brief introduction to these uh, investigations and of course if you want to know more you have to uh, delve deeper into each one individually. Let's start with tonometry. Tonometry is the diagnostic test which is used to measure the pressure of the eye. And this is important because elevated intraocular pressure is a characteristic of glaucoma. And so what tonometry does is it measures the force required to flatten the surface of the cornea. The image that you see on the right hand side is Goldman applanation tonometry. And this is the gold standard method and the applanation tonometer head is mounted on the slit lamp. What happens is the probe touches the cornea and when the orthoptist looks through the slit lamp microscope, they can see two semicircles, which we call Myers. And you can see a representation of these down the bottom here. What the aim is, is to align the inner margins of the semicircles as shown in this image here, using a dial on the tonometer. So once you've aligned the position, so you align the inner margins, you read the dial of the intraocular pressure reading off the um, tonometer itself, the tonometry instrument. So this one here shows that it's out of alignment, it's, it's too far inwards, and this one here is too far outwards. So this one on the right hand side is just perfect. And the pressure reading that it gives you is in millimeters of mercury. Now there are other instruments to measure intraocular pressure, but for the purposes of this presentation, um, I'm only focusing on Goldman applanation tonometry because as I said, this is the gold standard method uh, and, and something you will have to become very familiar with. The next set of investigations relate to anterior chamber angle depth. The depth of the anterior chamber is a really important factor in glaucoma, particularly in closed angle glaucoma, because what happens is the drainage canals get blocked or covered over kind of like a sink with something covering the drain. And so with angle closure glaucoma, the iris is not as wide open as it should be. And the outer edge of the iris bunches up over these drainage canals and can cause um, elevated intraocular pressure. So there are a few techniques to measure the anterior chamber depth, which I'll go through now. So the first technique is gonioscopy, and this is one method to objectively measure the angle. So the average adult eye chamber depth is about 3.15 millimeters, and any chamber depth that is less than 2.5 millimeters is actually at risk of developing angle closure. And so using the slit lamp and a special gonioscopy lens, which is comprised of mirrors, is how an orthoptist or an ophthalmologist can assess the angle. Now, as I said, this is just a very brief overview. And uh, if you feel you need to know more about gonioscopy particularly, you'll have to um, look at other resources. So in um, patient files, when there is reference to how open or closed the angle is, they it will be listed as anywhere from grade zero to grade four. So I'll explain um, how this works. So sometimes it, it, it can be a bit difficult to identify angle structures, even if you're an experienced practitioner. And working out how open the angle is, is actually done by comparing the distance between Schwalbe's line, which is here, and the ciliary body, which is down there. 
So a common way of actually grading the angle or deciding how open it is, is something called the Schaefer system. And this method records the angle in degrees between two imaginary lines which are on a tangent to the inner surface of the trabeculum and the anterior surface of the iris. And so what the system does is it assigns a numerical grade to each quadrant of the angle. Now, the most important thing for now is that if you see in a patient's file notes that the angle is, for example, grade two, which is here, you know that this is approaching closure. So a grade four angle is open maximally 35 to 45 degrees here. And you can see Schwab's line, ciliary body, nice open angle. Grade three angle starts to become a bit more closed, 25 to 35 degrees. Grade two is 20 degrees open. So now we're starting to get to approaching closure. Grade one is a 10 degree angle and zero is completely closed. So a grade one and two angle, you have to be very wary of because these are patients that um, are approaching angle closure and also uh, you have to be wary of dilating these patients as well. The Van Herrick method of angle estimation is very simple and it's performed on a slit lamp using a, a, just a narrow beam of light project, which is projected onto the peripheral corner. Uh, cornea, sorry. So if the distance between the posterior surface of the cornea and the iris, which is termed CA, the chamber angle, has at least the same width as the slit, SC, which is projected onto the cornea, then the angle is widely open. So if this area, this zone here, is open and wide, that's an open angle. And we would assign that a grade four. And the relationship between SC and CA is one to one. If the relationship is one to one and a half, so the chamber angle is smaller, then this is assigned a grade three. Angle closure is unlikely in this case. If the relationship is one to a quarter, so this area is getting smaller still. Angle closure is likely and that's assigned a grade one. And zero is a completely closed angle. Here's another way to look at the same thing. So here we've got a grade four. So you can see if you're shining a light here, the reflection is there on the cornea and in the middle, the blue area, the iris is wide open. There's a lot of space there. Grade three, the blue area starts to get skinnier Grade two, skinnier still. Grade one, it's just a tiny little line. It's really approaching closure. And then grade a zero angle is completely closed. So this is how we determine Van Herrick um, grading of angles. And again, you will see um, in a patient file that they can be graded from zero to four. Uh, and usually in a patient file, it will tell you if it's a grade three angle, it will tell you also usually how they've, they've um, assessed the angle, whether it's been by gonioscopy or the Schaefer system or with the Van Herrick grading. So here is what the Van Herrick looks like actually on, a, on an eye rather than the schematic image. So if we have a look at the grade four angle, this um, is where you sli uh, shine the slit lamp beam and there's your reflection. So the optically empty region between the two slit images is a lot wider than the slit on the cornea. So this is why we're giving that a grade four. And the chamber angle is wide open and it's according to grade four on the Van Herrick grading system. If we have a look at a grade two angle, we see that the optically empty zone in the middle is really small and it's approximately a quarter of the width of the corneal slit image. And so we're looking at a relatively narrow um, angle corresponding to about grade two according to Van Herrick. So you're looking at this zone here on the iris cornea area to see how wide open it is. Pachymetry is another important investigative technique for uh, monitoring and detecting glaucoma. And 
pachymetry is just the measurement of corneal thickness. So normal corneal thickness is around 550, 555 microns. And if the patient has a thicker cornea, this gives a falsely high intraocular pressure. So for example, if the IOP is 24, but their central corneal thickness or CCT is 625 microns, then you have to make an adjustment of minus six. So that brings us down to 18 millimeters of mercury and probably isn't elevated. So I'm just gonna say that again. If the patient's um, intraocular pressure is 24 millimeters of mercury, but their central corneal thickness is 625, you have to minus six off that and make an adjustment and that then gives you an IOP adjusted reading of 18 and therefore probably not elevated and therefore probably not glaucomatous. Now the converse is also true if they have a thinner cornea and this gives a false lower reading. So if a patient has an IOP of 18 but a central corneal thickness of say 465, what we need to do is add six to that. So really now it's an adjusted intraocular pressure of 24 and that's too high. So this now becomes a concern that they might have glaucoma. Pachymetry is performed with an instrument called a pachymeter and it actually touches the corneal surface to take the reading digitally. Moving on now to optical coherence tomography or OCT and OCT is performed using an instrument that uses reflected light to measure ocular structures and it can evaluate the optic nerve head and nerve fibre layer and indicates whether there's been thinning of the nerve fibre layer and whether glaucomatous uh, damage has occurred. And one of the really great things about OCT is it, it detects these changes in the nerve fibre layer which are often preclinical or subclinical and they're not easy to see with the um, regular imaging of direct or indirect ophthalmoscopy and it sees things that are very early stage changes. So when you see an OCT uh, printout of a patient who's had it done on the optic nerve, it basically uses a traffic light system. So anything that's green is good, uh, yellow is worrisome, and red is bad. So it gives you an indication of if it's in the red zone, there's something to worry about there. And then the final component um, to investigate glaucoma is perimetry. And um, the most important thing to remember here is that defects in glaucoma, most of them occur centrally. So usually within a 30 degree radius from the fixation point. And so this is the area that we most commonly test um, when we're performing perimetry or visual field testing. So in glaucoma, a visual field defect usually starts off as a nasal step, something like this and then starts to progress as more of an arcuate scotoma and then eventually in the late stages you end up with this almost complete peripheral field loss um, and this is this is the worst case scenario so starts off sort of centrally nasal step areas arcuates and then finally um, almost tunnel vision so just to recap in this presentation we have covered uh, investigations including tonometry uh, measurement of the uh, angle, pachymetry, optical coherence tomography, perimetry, and optic nerve head evaluation.